Part 4 of 12 of The Gothicers by Keith McCleary and Sophia G. Starmack. In our last episode, our brother and sister detective team continued the investigation into their latest case, with Audred nearly blowing up their house and Peachum's harpsichord lessons disturbed as a result. And now, the continuation, performed by Ben Tanson. Dred Gothiker's laboratory was small and claustrophobic. Hung with all manner of instruments, it barely had room for Ogdred himself to say nothing of angling Jen, the wizened old woman who'd arrived on his doorstep that morning carrying an ominous parcel, which now rested in her lap. Please, Ogdred said, one leather-gloved hand outstretched. And a spidery script across the parcel's front was clearly written the legend 1319 Corner Way, London. Jen set the package on the bench and Ogdred unwrapped the paper to reveal the objects within. A pair of fine silk stockings and a heavy leather-bound journal. A draft of perfume and musk rose, flooded the room. Ogdred rubbed his aching temples. I suppose it may be time, madam, for you to reveal how you come to deliver this collection of ephemera addressed to my home. I certainly can read a street address, sir, replied the crone in a righteous voice, especially as a washerwoman, which I'd done many a year among the odd trades. I suppose you, sir, ain't spent too much time down in the steamies and factories. But that very thing is why I come. It's a sad life for girls what's got no better choice. But I do say there's no shame in hard work, sir. No shame. Ogdred nodded with what he hoped passed as a charitable agreement. Jen paused to suck air into her troubled lungs. <laughs> well, sir, as of late, I've had me eye on a blonde slip of a thing round the laundry, name of Abigail. A frail girl, but a good worker. Till the last few weeks, I noticed a change. Withdrawn. Coming in late, slipping out early. Figured she must have uh, had some new gentleman friend if you take me delicate points, sir, what had got her into trouble? Well, sir, I was on the point of taking her aside and giving her a bit of advice, and then she disappeared. The first night she didn't come in, I was angry, but when the second night passed, I knew something wasn't on. I decided to go do a bit of sleuthing on my own, as the local constables don't look upon the working girl with much charity. Well, sir, while I was coming into work last night, I could have sworn I saw a wisp of blonde hair disappear around the corner just as I turned in. Land, thinks I. Sure, and it ain't the young thing herself. But all that was left as I approached was this package. And as your address was on it, figures I'd be as good a place as any to start. And that, she concluded, folding her hands as primly as her rags would allow, is all I know of the story. You, sir. She turned her reproving gaze on Ogdred. Might well be in position to tell me the rest, if in you takes me point. I suppose it's just as well the young lady of the house has left us. It may very well be, sir, that you be the reason Abigail had been distracted. I couldn't see rightly fit to bring it up in front of your, the, the lady, your, Jen paused. Well, what is she to you exactly? The young woman who left with the animal. Peachum Gothiker is a little concerned, sniffed Ogdred. And while your interest and discretion is understood, there is really no need. The occupants of this house are no stranger to the darknesses that lurk beneath the skin. He frowned. But I take your meaning, madam, and I am curious at being implicated in this affair. If something untoward is at work with these walls, I am eager to know it at once. However, I assure you that other than finding myself in the inexplicable position of residing, at an address somehow known to your colleague, I can shed no light on her disappearance at present. You know, I figured as much, sighed Jen. If you'd been lying, you would have given a start. She gestured at the stockings, but you didn't even blink. She rose. And now I'm embarrassed to have imposed, sir. I'm sure the girl will appear for all one old woman's worries. It's quite all right, Audrey sighed. I'm sorry I could not be of more help. 
Lord, no, Jen scoffed. What are the chances, the address on the parcel leading to some kind of resolution? It would be too easy, my lord, and yet your time is much appreciated, sir. And don't you think twice, I can show myself the door. Well, we might check this diary, Roger began, and looked down to see strange markings on the book's cover he had not noticed at first glance. Madam! He called, but Jen had scuttled into the foyer before he could hand her back the package. He grabbed the parcel as he ran to follow her out the door. Outside, the empty side street echoed with the muffled clatter of a carriage approaching. As Audrey peered into the glowing snow, Anglin Jen's dark shape was already obscured. He cried out, but the wind swallowed his words. And now the carriage was upon him. The driver was a rough-looking man in a top coat and hat, as black as two stallions whose reins he now pulled up. Sorry, sir, he said with an uncanny leer at Ogdred that exposed a gold front tooth. Just wanted to read the numbers on it box there. I'm late as it is, and I can't see a single address in this blizzard. Ogdred looked to see his mailbox face down in the snow, upset by the morning storm. He picked it up and dusted it off until he could see the house numbers once more. He would have to speak to Arthwick about rehanging it. Ah, oh, thanks, the carriageman winked. I tell you, it's no good trying to get where you're going if you don't already know the way. He leaned down, and something in his tone and knowing glance turned Ogdred's stomach. Do take care now, the stranger offered in a low voice, and then with a snap of his reins <laughs> and a great throaty laugh, <laughs> he was off. Indeed, Ogdred muttered, staring at the mailbox in his hands. He wondered now how his visitor had come to find his doorstep that morning with her foreboding parcel. And if her folly in rushing out the door without it had not been folly, after all. The Gothicers by Keith McCleary and Sophia.